τον τελευταίο ομιλητή μας, ε, ο οποίος είναι από τη Σιγκαπούρη. Ε, Geo Xin is our last presenter. He comes from Singapore, my mother's hometown. Uh, he is the principal perfusionist of the Department of uh, Cardiac and Thoracic Vascular Surgery at the National University Heart Center of Singapore. Geo? Hi, how are you? We are all fine and we are waiting for your presentation. Yeah, can, uh, can I just pull out my slides? Okay. Yeah, good evening, good evening everyone. So, um, my name is Gyoxin and I'm grateful to uh, Athena Ramu, is it? Colonel Chief Professionist and Victoria for giving me this opportunity to present our team's experiences in managing aortic aneurysm. Basically, this paper, this, uh, this presentation is not so much of scientific, but uh, mainly on the uh, technicality of the perfusion. Okay. So, <clears throat> that is our team. Uh, can you all see all this? So, uh, a team of 12 of us, and uh, currently now we have 15 of us. And uh, yeah, we are, we are growing more and getting more, pay, more, more, uh, more cases now. Okay, let me dive down straight into uh, slideshows. Uh, from here, we have 160 cases between 2021 to 2023, of which uh, 16 cases uh, use the uh, frozen elephant trunks technique. And uh, the rest of the, uh, the number are actually hemiarch and uh, ascending aorta displacement. Uh, we have slimlined our workflow to the following for a more efficient uh, aortic repair, okay? And uh, the workflow actually consists of three main components, pre-operative preparation, intra-operative preparations, and CPA management. I'll explain each component and the, and the relevant SOPs in the detail in the following slides. <clears throat> so, uh, our aim is basically, uh, we're trying to achieve shortest possible pump run time. As you can see from this, uh, the training analysis, uh, we, we basically, we uh, selected a single database from, from an aortic surgeons, uh, which is, this is a surgeon's uh, initial. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, we pick all the database, we get the data from nine of his patients and we, we we pull up in the we plot in the graph and we as you can see that uh, the longer the bypass uh, the more bleeding is so therefore we 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 have to aim to uh, to to achieve the shortest possible bypass time and uh, i believe if we can shorten the uh, the the bypass time a pump run time where we can have a better outcomes for our patients. So what we are doing is uh, for every case, we because we don't do many cases, we have only 16 cases, and every case for us is very precious. And we, we always have a preoperative huddle. So we have a preoperative briefing before each case to align and coordinate the team members. And also we exchange our insights and expertise confirm the preparations and procedure, selected the strategies and technique, and discuss the contingency plan. We believe that the briefing improved the team efficiency and resulted in shorter pump run. And uh, I think our, our team member realized that if we are able to work seamlessly, we can bring our patient out more successfully uh, without much of uh, a post-operative morbidity. So as you can see from here, the main thing is uh, we, we have a lot of things discussed during this hardest time. We sit down, we look at the city, we, we prepare what kind of uh, plan are we going to do, and then uh, what our surgeon wanted to do, and what kind of circuit we need to fabricate or to configure, and uh, uh, what are the uh, uh, ACP route that we are going to. And the most important thing is what are the desired temperature and type of cardioplegia and, and how many arterial lines we need. 
and and I think the type of carbapigil is important. In early day, we use a uh, blood carbapigil, but it actually prolong the bypass because uh, every twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, you have to actually redose it. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we brought in uh, Professor Tiu brought in the the ideas of uh, neonatal carbapigil. I'll explain to you guys later in detail. So. Being a perfusionist, we not only just handling palm. So what we do is, uh, we actually start our work from the beginning when we prep our patients. So we can see that I put this cooling blanket right in the in the center, and uh, the rest is basically uh, uh, not so much on removing us. So so when we patient came to OT, we make sure that we prep the patient with all this blanket that inflated. And we, we believe that, that uh, if we can cool the patient prior to 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 uh, skin incision, we can can actually bring down the temperature to to a lower temperature, say thirty four, and and it shorten the for us to cool the patient down to twenty eight moderate hypothermia, right? So. As what I explained to you just now, uh, we start topical pool cooling uh, uh, at the time where the patient is draped. So the interval between uh, skin incisions and the median stenotomy means from we move from here to here. Uh, <clears throat> it allows us to cool the patient uh, the core, to the core temperature of 34 by the time we, we, we open out the chest. Okay. So, so let me see what I can share is, uh, as you can see that why the surgeon is preparing the, uh, the right axillary artery and the left axillary artery exposure, we can actually do uh, some circuit modification where we have two, we have wide branch, we have two wide branch from the main line and we have uh, on the right, we have two branch, one for the RAA, one for the side arm of the graft after the reconstruction of the elephant trunk. And on the left, you can see there's a two branch as well. This one, one is actually meant for LSA, the other one meant for standby. And uh, in early day, we used to divide our line, our main line, one to the RAA and one to the LAA on the table itself, but uh, uh, we improvise it. We bring the bifurcation down from the seraphil and, and because of that, we can actually attach our flow meter and the Hoffman clamp here. So we can actually individualize, individualize, in, individualize the, the flow to each, each uh, 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 pipe, okay? So, so once that has been done, once the, the chest is open and, and, and I mean, we prepare for cannulation, so we load in heparin of 300 units per kilogram uh, heparin, and then we immediately proceed for pre-CBB checklist, and then uh, we make sure that we have sufficient palm, and we have to set up another palm for just uh, uh, SACP to LCCA, and uh, and and we proceed for RAA and RAA cannulation uh, once uh, it's being happy nice and and once ACC is reaches uh, 400 second and above. So after that, once you have been cannulated, we actually took out 250 ml of whole blood for the needle. So later part, I will explain to you what is the needle and how to prepare. It probably we are very much different than others. So maybe we can share with you how we actually prepare the needle in, in, in this side of the world. So once it's connected and we drain out the blood, we harvest 150 mils of whole blood for the needle. We had to do, we perform the cannula flow test, all right? We use 1.5, 1.25 liters mil per minute of flow to have a forward flow to see whether is there any resistance uh, when we when we run in this this uh, 1.25 speed of, of flow, uh, because sometimes we do not know whether the the graph is being NS, the unit graph is being anastomosed properly. So through this flow test, we can actually tell the surgeon that whether 
uh, if we go on, we will have a problem high resistance. So all these things we have to communicate with the surgeon, so therefore they can do an early adjustment before we we are ready to go on, and then we have problem of forward flu and we, and we can't get the pressure that you wanted. So if if they say anything happened, then the surgeon will proceed for making necessary cannula repositioning by the by them. So once everything is done, say that we are able to pass a test, then we will set our our uh, heat, uh, our heater cooler temperature to to uh, ten degree different uh, compared to a nasal te uh, temperature. So this one after that, uh, once everything is ready, say that uh, the graph is okay and the forward flow is okay, pass the test, then we will immediately go and bypass. Uh, this is very important when you go and bypass. So each time when you because our cases, as you can see from our database, 90% uh, of our frozen elephant trunk technique, we, we, we use uh, 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 bilateral uh, axillary artery perfusions to uh, Unigraph. So each time when you do that, we have to make sure when you go on bypass, you have to check, make sure that the, 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 the right radial map is not too high. If it's too high, mean there's too much of shunting, and therefore it affects the systemic uh, 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 maps. So, so in in the early pace of starting bypass, uh, the communication is very intensive to so make sure that we we the patient doesn't suffer and 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 and, and under -fulfills. So once this thing been done, if they say it's so high, meaning to say that the vessel loop has to be tightened further downstream to the to the unigraph. Uh, 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 and this Moses, you have to tighten up so that you can actually divert more flow to, to, to uh, systemic and, uh, and and getting a better uh, perfusion, right? So once that is done, we will move to a second phase where the minute we can achieve full flow, we go on a rapid cooling, right? So this rapid cooling, we will actually make make sure that the heater cooler temperature versus the nasal. Uh, not too much. It shouldn't be go more than 10 centigrade. Okay. And uh, the topical cooling, we still continue uh, where we draw in the environment, environmental air or ambient air with about 16 degree. So these two things helps to fasten up the cooling. And and as you know, when cooling comes in, you can actually cause a lot of vessel constriction, either cerebral or cardiovascular and systemic. And <clears throat> And we have to go into uh, permissive hemodilution. We push back some of the blood up to the back, and then we we uh, hemodilute intentionally to get into uh, a, a lower HP. So therefore, we can go on a high cardiac index. Okay. So this is important because uh, when you have a high cardiac index uh, versus a early day or where is a temperature guided uh, a cardiac index. You tend to go lower flow because the pressure is high, and uh, you tend to underperfuse the end organ. So, so we realize that after that, we, we realize that we need to actually go on a permissive hemodilution, and we use a go directed perfusion protocol to guide the flow and to achieve the optimum pressure and higher flow. Therefore, we can actually improve the microcirculation and enhance a lower lactate level prior to circuitry arrest. And as you come down, you can see that we use uh, either alpha or pH step. Uh, for us, we when we are going on this uh, frozen elephant trunk technique, uh, because we use trilateral uh, SACP, so we are not so worried about whether the brain is homogenized, it's cool down, or not. so we use alpha step. Because if we use pH that you are actually adding more embol embolic load to the brain because the PCO is high and the cerebral vessel will work at dilated. So you will go into a, a phenomenon called luxurious, uh, luxurious flow phenomenon, which you do not want because uh, you can actually increase the uh, embolic load and, uh, and uh, causes a post-operative stroke. And, and, uh, this, and then the following stage is... Uh, we have to aim for a shorter time to 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 uh, cut circuitry arrest. 
So what we did was uh, from the very beginning, as, as what I told you, we go rapid cooling with a topical cooling blanket. We don't use a water blanket because of the uh, akimide uh, um, grow on the in in the uh, HCD. So so we have taken that out. So we mainly use a uh, air blanket to do it. So with the assistance from topical cooling through ambient air plus a permissive hypo, we can actually bring down the the CVB to circuitry arrest rest time less than 30 minutes. So that allows the surgeon to work very fast on the distal uh, a deployment of the frozen elephant trunk and then uh, reconstruction of the, 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 the distal anisomosis. Okay, so of course, uh, prior to this, we will actually have to give, uh, uh, we have to protect the myocardium and and what we do is we use an uh, We use a single dose. So I explain to you later uh, in more detail. Then we actually, we don't do a uh, deep hypothermia. We just basically, we are just a moderate because uh, with the SACP, so we are not too worried about the brain. But uh, I think the lower body organ, they actually, they can tolerate longer ischemic time. So in fact, uh, uh, we have a data where we find that uh, our well-trained surgeon, they are actually getting a better surgical skill. And we are in fact thinking of getting, maybe moving to 30. So therefore, we don't subject patient for unnecessary hypothermia. If we can actually uh, do quick uh, distal anesthesis, and also you can bring it out fast uh, on the rapid cooling. Okay, so now we move into a stage call. Uh, because we can do fast, right? So we can actually do an early uh, uh, frozen elephant trunk deployment and early distal graft anesthesis, and hence, we can actually go on early uh, reinitiation of uh, CPB and rewarming. And uh, during the rewarming, we actually uh, uh, we deploy alpha state management and uh, and and straight to uh, early separation or bypass. So this is the one that uh, basically uh, I'm actually summarizes the previous slide uh, on the initial car bypass. So when you have problem, so can you can actually tighten out this uh, vessel loop. So instead of going more here, you can actually direct more blood down here. Okay, same thing. So this is important as a perfectionist because uh, if you don't communicate well and you think that uh, uh, if you, you you think that it's okay and then the surgeon, the subsequent step, they will be very busy and and, and grossly the repair work, they will have no time for you. So we have to settle it as soon as possible. And uh, and again, as trying to reinforce what I'm saying just now, uh, with the permissive hemodilution and high color index, you can actually, hemodilution is good because we improve uh, microcirculation. And also we increase, once you have both very high flow and open up this, you actually increase the uh, density of uh, perfused capillaries and hence uh, reduce uh, uh, lactate levels. We we even bring our HP down to six point five to seven gram for the during the cooling phase. Okay, now we come to myocardial protection. So this uh, neonido uh, was actually brought in by our professor Dr. Tio Kofidis. I think uh, you guys know him, and he's my best boss ever uh, since two zero one eight. And, uh, and this uh, basically the, uh, uh, it was actually developed by uh, a pediatric cardiac surgeon, Pedro, Pedro Neonido in 1990s. And uh, uh, Dr. Professor Thiel actually introduced the concept uh, of using single dose Neonido instead of HTK custodial for his minimally invasive in 2018. Since then, uh, Neonido has been the preferred color picture agent for lengthy and complicated cases in the NUHS. And also I, from time to time when I free, I actually did a bit of research on St. Thomas uh, micro picture versus uh, Neonido and Casadio. And they found that Neonido is actually much cheaper compared to the other two. And also uh, uh, it, it can actually uh, have a better, uh, a less VF when the cross is taken off. So a higher rate of spontaneous ECG. And uh, we're trying to keep a low volume and 
1,000, I think, is not much because usually when we go on long cases, we will have a hemofilter on board. So we can actually do a volume control. And to, to, to our surprise, that uh, in fact, when you have neonatal, it's actually you do have much of electrolyte disturbances during CPV uh, as compared to HTK, where you naturally have to have acute hyponatremia and subsequently you have a low blood pressure. And even you look at the hypotension degree, in fact, for the neonatal is much less. Okay. So uh, our pharmacies, we don't actually prepare a pre made for us. So being we have to do it ourselves as a physician. So uh, when there's a case, we, we, we have a checklist. So we draw all these things out, the necessary things that we, all the drugs, and we remove some of the plasma light, and we do it fresh, okay? And and these are the, actually the algorithm of neonatal carpeggia prep and uh, the re guidelines. So as what I showed you, that uh, these are the cocktails that we need to put in into the plasma light. And it looks like this because we homogenize it. You can see the the bag is like very misty because it's very cold, and we chill it down to about four to ten degree while waiting for the surgeon to 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 pass out the blood. And uh, and once the aorta or axillary line is cannulated, we actually harvest some some blood out, uh, which is a whole blood. And you have to try. You have to put a patient on a treadmill because. Otherwise, you will get into a, a hypotensive uh, a, a problem. So head down. So therefore, you you can momentarily secure the a better hemodynamic. Then uh, <clears throat> we have uh, we actually after you have done everything plus blood in, you actually get one thousand two hundred uh, readily to deliver to patient. Of course, uh, you can chase whatever fifty mils still in the circuit. Otherwise, uh, you 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 readily you can have one thousand two hundred for any signs of the patient that subject for for uh, long cases type A MIS MVR or type A or frozen apron trunk technique, and uh, we trying to bring it down to eight to ten degrees. Sorry, because of the this slide is uh, on a different uh, platform, so we can't show properly. So we keep it at eight to ten degree, and uh, the dosages is. Is very easy because uh, you either have a hypertrophic heart or normal heart, so or enlarged heart. So so hypertrophic heart we give a bit more because in terms of the muscle thickness and 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 uh, the, the pressure that driven that we need to give more. And also when we give, we also have a different pressure range. For MIS MVR, we basically just use two hundred. And and then uh, once the heart is arrested, we bring now to uh, 160 to 180, simply because uh, we, we we want to have a cardio uh, neonatal to to go in a bit longer, so this allows the ionic exchange as well to have a, a better cooling for for both ventricles and and the rest of the heart. So it, it's the same thing like in MIS, AVG, AVR. And like this in type A or in in, in uh, frozen elephant trunk technique, we actually use a direct corneal seal, and we are uh, actually have a range of 150 millimeter mercury. Once a high is arrested, we bring it down, and we trying to uh, uh, we trying to do we trying to do the heart with neonatal a bit longer. So therefore, it's like how we give custody, so that uh, at least uh, there is a sufficient ionic exchange so that the heart can actually uh, stand longer ischemic time. I, I have a video here, but unfortunately it's unable to play in uh, Ubuntu. Uh, only can play in the uh, I, uh, iPad. Okay, so this is how we prepare the autolocal blood. So uh, there are some part of the world where they actually take bloods during during the pump run. So they have two small pumps. Uh, one drawing blood, one drawing in the custody, and then they meet at one point and they deliver to the patient. So, so but ours is a bit different. We actually took it out, and because when they took it out, uh, you have a higher concentration, a uh, higher uh, uh, hematocrit percentages, and I think it, it helps on myocardial protection as well. So once you have taken out, then you can see the nurse put in the small tip here, and we start to transfer blood to our neonatal bag. You can see my colleagues is 
sucking out some blood here and go into the into the neonatal solution okay then after that we have a closed loop and uh, we can actually recirculate the blood into the bag and come up on the back through using this small small little pump and single 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 circuit and go through the aluminum coil to cool down and we only have an eye so at any given point uh, our our neonatal is actually chilled down to uh, four to ten four to uh, ten degree yeah so so once the uh, surgeon cross cram uh, we run in the cataplegia is always at this uh, temperature range so it almost immediately the heart get arrested uh, probably about 50 to 70 mils of neonatal so subsequently whatever blood that goes in is to to help the the heart to charge ATP as well as to cool down, particularly if the patient had a right heart failure. So it's more important to deal a bit longer so that you can actually protect the right heart. So therefore, if you don't protect well, so you find that your, your CPP separation will be a big big problem because the right heart failure to, to pump. And uh, <clears throat> this is a semantic diagram where, in fact, whatever you have seen, you actually, we pull out in the in a drawing board so so the drawing board show a hybrid cp so you can see that they say sometimes the they have the combination of cabg and uh, and and and, and vowel cases cbg sometimes see with chronic artery disease they do not want to waste the neonatal they grab the patient so they use the st thomas micropedia first so once they have done that then when they when they move on to a vowel displacement uh then we use a neonatal so we have a hybrid system so so if you wish to have you can actually uh, send it to you so this is taken in 201 where we still have se the old pump so this this semantic diagram show you that the blood is actually can be actually circulated back to the to the back again so you just one click of a uh, three-way you lock up the feedback loop into the back you can actually deliver straight to patient so it's very easy okay so you can read all these references we also uh, uh, written a paper about this uh, back in 2020 about how we we deliver uh, uh, neonatal uh, it's, a, it's actually a technical paper okay so at times when after you have given the uh, carupigia neonatal you you most of the time you can get a flat line uh, ECG I mean assistedly so but at times you will see all this uh, electrical electromagnetic dissociation or PA so this harmless you don't get too worried uh, it's just that there's no contraction but uh, the the electrical pump is still running and and we have multiple cases like this the heart come out okay a patient discharge well and this and that so so don't get too worried and then and 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 propose uh, another pressure dose uh, that will be quite detrimental to the heart sometimes you might see uh, the morphology of this change so it, it, it become larger and larger it's okay it doesn't it doesn't harm as long as as long as uh, 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 it is not a uh, can see a, a physical contraction on the heart uh, then you have to reduce so these are, uh, we took it from MSAC, so you just follow what MSAC is saying. So basically most of the time we fall on the mild to moderate kind of uh, uh, hypothermia circuitry arrest. So again, I reinforce this because uh, <clears throat> when you cool the patient, you must know uh, what is the consequence of cooling the patient. So you can see that there's so much of red fuel here that uh, as a perfectionist, we must know how to counter this. So if say you are hemodilute the patient and you go on high flow, and you have increased your... Excuse your me, I have to ask you to speed up a little bit. Thank you. Okay, then uh, you, you you have to use a vessel dilator to actually dilate it. Several protection, I think some of your colleagues has actually uh, 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 shared. And and for us, our standard is use a trilateral selective uh, cerebral perfusion. And we use this one for LCCA, okay? And, and and this is how we we when we have a divided uh, a, a main line of the, the table we can actually control the flow 
and you can actually measure it and you don't go too high because it's too high it's not so good for the brain sometimes they can they can have a post of or a, a post operative hemorrhagic stroke and 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 we we use the alpha step while we we are perfusing the brain and our sip gas also we are very careful we put one to three ratio until we we we, we, we done our blood gases okay and the nearest no don't go don't 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 get too worried because if it's not going up it's okay because you just cool down a bit more but you do increase the flow increase of flow pressure will be high you can cause more embolic load and then you can get a con hem uh, hemorrhaging in, uh, sorry uh uh, uh my cerebral in front uh, conversion hemorrhaging stroke so these are the things that you can see with lcca around one, one line and we have the clamp here we can control and we use the genos uh, ECMO console and we have you can see this one is too high and the pressure is about 80 90 so we need to clamp a bit and they bring it down to 0.3 at 0.3 we get about 60 so it's just nice so the surgeon don't make a noise at, at this time surgeon got no time for you so you have to help the surgeon to titrate the flow as well as the pressure and co2 inspiration is also important uh, because uh, that is to help the surgeon for the airing purpose but at the same time you, you are not careful your old suckers are on you can actually create a estrogenic uh, pH step okay and we we use hemofilter to have a volume control at time we do zero balance as well and most of the time for long cases we have this uh, cytokine remover cytosol or ha 0 and and if you read through uh, this uh, nears you, you can see that actually nears does not really diffract uh, whatever happened in ot you know it's not really uh, telling you the we slow patient will get brain dead and our patient will have a prolonged uh, recovery uh, not really but you uh, you can see that some of the recommendation is is only may consider, but it's not a compulsory. So don't 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 chase the number, don't chase the number. As long as you have good flow, good good temperature and and good pressure, if you think that you cannot get this one, you just cool down, cool down maybe to a little bit lower. Then you find that you have a better uh, news. Anyway, this is a double channel. If you really want to have it, you need a 15 channel to really study the whole brain. We don't use a uh, transcranial Doppler to detect the any emboli. And this anticoagulation for my center, we keep at 400. We never want to treat because uh, when you do a uh, frozen elephant trunk, particularly with a junior surgeon, there will be a lot of bleeding and there will be a lot of blood sucked to the cell saver. So when you wash and return to us, uh, you find that uh, there's a lot of plasma protein actually being removed. So if you can't, if you see low rent, you better transfer this and 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 then you repeat again uh, to see whether your ACT improve or not. Otherwise, you'll get rebound, happy post and then patient will continue to bleed. Okay. And and don't worry because uh, post -op, most of the uh, uh, aneurysma, aneurysm case, you're never going to give uh, fibrinogen. So don't worry about clotting and this and that. Usually you won't clot. So say that your case is very bad on that day and you give so much of donor blood transfusion, then it's good for you as a physician to order two to four units of LFP to replenish it. And although this is debatable and uh, it's not really proven, uh, but we still give, we 10 minutes before secretary arrest, we give all these three cocktails and, and, and hopefully that uh, it, it works on the brain and the rest of the other organs. And glycemic control is unnecessary. Uh, as you know, the higher it, it goes, uh, it, it, it will be a bad outcome for neuro neurologically. And reinitiation of CPB and rewarming, this is very important. Reason why I'm telling you it's important because once you have deployed this and then you go on the side branch, then the surgeon tell you rewarm. You don't go rewarm immediately. You waste a lot of 10 minutes to rewarm because if you go rewarm, then you definitely will subject patient for ischemic refusion injury. So always a lot, 10 minutes. And, and during this time, 10 minutes you don't rewarm because it's too low. And you find that the surgeon need to catch a lot of bleeding. So there will be a lot of blood flow disruption. Okay. And uh, at least you can stop the pump for the surgeon and you don't worry about brain insult because the patient is still cold. 28 degrees, you can go out to 9 minutes, 10 minutes without flow to the brain. So, so that is the beauty of it. And 
don't get distracted by the surgeon. Surgeon will look at and say, why the BP very low? Because this is a lower body uh, perfusion. It's not the brain. So you can keep about 50, even a bit lower, it's okay. Because it's too high, then you find that there will be a lot of repair needed later part. Huh? So if you find that it's very high BP, then you just use vessel dilator. And at this moment, when we warm, we, we again, we use alpha snap because we don't want to lose too much of uh, particulate to the brain. And these are how we, we are moving from uh, 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 into a side arm. Okay, can you see? We have this connected to the side arm and then we connect and then we slowly release the clamp. We fill up in the air. Once it's the air ready, and then we clamp the proximal part of the crowd and then we release the clamp and we start. You can see, then we start to have a 10 minutes uh, reperfusion and then followed by rewarming. Okay, the bubbling, I don't want to talk so much. I think most of us, we practicing the same. But one thing that I want to say is uh, you, you, you don't go as sick, uh, 36.5, because this is not good for the brain. And also don't rewarm too fast. If otherwise, when after the come out bypass, you find that the patient will, will the temperature will drop very low, maybe 32, 33, then you, you start to get panic. So minimum is actually 38 minutes. And usually we take about 40, 50 minutes at time one hour because for debranching, it takes a long time. For debranching, he has so so much of time to spend on debranching. So the rewarming, you can take very gentle and uh, do have to be very quick. So it's good for the patient. So usually the normal sequence. Yeah, uh, you have the one that we close. Okay, so we start at LCCA followed by right in a minute. Then the last one is uh, left subclavian. Some do on palm, some do subclavian on the off palm. So I think uh, uh, nowadays we, as a perfectionist, uh, we are more aware that cardiotomy suctions and re and and all these things can actually detrimental to a patient. So it's good. If auto small volume, you go to cell saver, wash and come back. Unless it's a large volume where you require immediate uh, volume replacement, then then you get back to your cardiotomy. Okay. So as you know, reinfusion of shape blood is associated with neurological injury, connective dec uh, decline, and lung injury attributed to due to the increased hemolysis and particularly fat because today's oxygenator are not built to handle fat unless you use a, a room well. Uh, which is from uh, Horizon. Okay, the regular blood management, we use cell saver and retransfuse after wash. And and you see that we use 1,000 mils, and, but the, we don't add more happening, but we can fast read because otherwise when the protein comes in, okay, you will get this wasted blood, you get clotted. And, and if you want to go fast to avoid stasis clotting, you use a Activate emergency wash mode if require emergency retransfusion. So the last thing that I uh, wish as a profession is we, we want to know what are the sources of particulate embolism. So pH that is not so good because it opens up O and then you cause luxurious flow to the brain and it, it tendency to get higher embolite and shed blood from cardiac. The best go to a cell saver and don't overflow your SACP. Okay, so don't worry about your, your nears and uh, this and that. And in summary, uh, for what we can achieve today is because our departmental head is, is providing excellent gui guidance and assistance. Uh, this HOD white man is a Professor Theo Covidis, and he's a kind man and he's, he's really good and he mentor us. And the team work together with dedication and efficiency. And the surgeon also has improved over the time. So you can see our our circuitry arrest time is getting less and less. And because our sample is small, so I, I don't think this is significant, but I believe if you give us another 100 cases, uh, you probably reach a plateau here. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Georg. Thank you for your excellent presentation and uh, your patience because it's four five o'clock now in Singapore in the morning. Yeah. Thank yeah, you for I'm staying all night with us. It's OK. Any okay. questions so I can, or you can write to me. questions from the audience? Happy Saratusis. It's really too late, so thank you again. Yeah. And we'll keep in touch. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so much. Yeah, most welcome.